Um, I was first diagnosed actually bipolar when I was 14. Like I said, my father said that I was not bipolar because bipolar people are crazy and I was not allowed to take that, that medication. And um, so I was put on just regular antidepressants, which, which, which does not work for somebody with bipolar. Um, I was struggling with my sexuality. I'm clearly gay. If you guys didn't pick that up, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, now, I don't know if you guys know much about Orange County, California, but that's where I'm from. Um, very, very conservative town. My dad was a complete and total racist and a homophobe. Um, yeah, and I went to Catholic high school because I, got, I was getting in trouble in junior high, so I'm Jewish. But my father felt that the nuns would be able to handle me better. <laughs> so they sent me to Catholic school, okay? <laughs> I ended up actually having my first entrepreneurial experience there selling drugs to all of the um, rich Catholic <laughs> school kids. That was my first job. Um, it was marijuana, which was legal back then. Um, I am 39 years old. I look young because I take a lot of naps, okay? Um, so when I was 14, I started cutting. I was uncomfortable in my own skin. I just wanted to rip my skin off, and I suffered from severe, severe uh, depression. And the hypomania, now I know in hindsight, which was basically just me acting out in, in school, I would just get these rushes of energy, and I couldn't contain myself. I couldn't sit still. It was far more complex than ADHD. And I got in so much trouble in, in, in high school. It was ridiculous. Um, I would spend the day like in, at lunchtime running around and jumping in and out of trash cans. I, I don't know. For real, that's what I would do. I, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, so I decided that I didn't want to be gay and that being gay was like the worst thing on the, on, on the earth. I was a total internal homophobe. So I tried to kill myself um, by slicing my wrists. And so I was institutionalized the first time when I was 15 years old. And um, they, uh, I don't remember what they diagnosed me with, but I was still diagnosed depressed. Um, fast forward, I decided, um, I moved up from my sales job to um, selling methamphetamine. I got a promotion, okay? <laughs> Um, so I was doing a lot of meth and selling meth, and um, it, it, was, it was great for my ADD. It was really good for my ADD. I was able to actually pass um, a bunch of classes that I had failed out of before. So for a while it worked until it didn't work, um, and I was institutionalized for that. Um, at this time I was still on antidepressants going on and off these antidepressants, on and off, on and off, but usually using methamphetamine and whatever drug I, I can get my hand on. Um, I, in my, I managed to pull myself together. I dealt more drugs when I was in college. I went to UCSB, and I, I graduated to pills at that time because the doctors were giving me all these pills. So I was just using, I mean, my daily cocktail for about 10 years was in the morning would be Ritalin and um, Vicodin. I would smash that up and snort that all day long. And uh, then I'd be taking uh, benzos all day, um, clonopin. Ativan, Xanax, and then I top it off with a with a little bit of Ambien at the end of the night. So um, I was using that and selling that, but I managed to gr get straight A's in college. Um, I ended up interning in the White House under President Clinton, doing this. So I, if any of you guys have suffered from addiction or have any kind of addictive personality characteristics, there is a period of time that it works and then it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> So it stopped working for me, and my depression absolutely took over my life as far as um, after I was not able to manage it anymore with my, my drinking and using. Um, I'll fast forward a little bit, and I had developed a severe eating disorder. Um, and I tried to get sober a number of times between the ages of 20 and 33. And I ended up relapsing at all those, uh, all those times because I couldn't manage my depression. I couldn't manage my um, drug and alcohol usage and uh, the eating store at the same time. So seven years ago, I um, was traveling with a client. I was in a hotel room in New York City, and I decided that, that was it. I, was, I, I couldn't live on this planet anymore with, with the feelings that I had, the severe depression that I had. 
I wanted to felt like I wanted to rip my skin off. The drugs weren't working. Nothing was working anymore. So I, I attempted an overdose in the hotel room. My eating disorder saved my life. I ended up waking up the next day, coming to. The whole room looked like a football team had come in there and had like a pizza party. There's a pizza on the wall. There's donuts smashed into the bed. I mean, everything, like food everywhere. The mini bar was tore apart. I don't remember any of this, but I ate myself out of my overdose. That's the only thing that I can say that saved my life. So I decided at that moment that I was going to um, go into treatment. I flew back home and, and, went to, and went to treatment seven years ago, and I've been sober se se ever since seven years. Now here comes the uh, depression, the bipolar really starts hitting, hitting me. Um, after I got out of tr treatment, I was on the couch for six months. I could not function. I absolutely could not do anything. I couldn't wash a dish. I couldn't do laundry. I was, I was useless. I couldn't, get, I couldn't hold a job. My girlfriend at the time, who I met, I met in treatment, uh, which is a great place to meet a girlfriend. I asked her, how many times have you been in treatment? She's like, oh, 27 times, not including 16 psychiatric stays. I'm like, great, that's my wife. I'm going to marry her. <laughs> I, so I thought, for real, because I'm like, this, is, this girl gets me, OK? She's going to get me. She got me. Um, so I'm, I'm on the couch like on the eighth month. I was, all I would watch is Law & Order SVU over and over, and Forensic Files. Um, Olivia Benson I'm in love with, OK? <laughs> And I even had a little crush on Detective Sabler. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, he has the wrong equipment, but I still have the crush on him. <laughs> so um, she's like, Wouldn't it, doesn't it sound nice to have somebody just cook, you have your food prepared and have you coffee and, you know, every morning and da 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 da. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, I really think you need to be hospitalized for your depressive disorder. And so um, I was like, OK, sure. So I entered into UCLA psychiatric um, and for major depressive disorder. And um, I was sober. I did this to maintain my sobriety. Um, in there, they told me I was bipolar too. I said, no, I'm not. And I refused to take the medication that was prescribed to me. Um, a couple years later, I saw another doctor. He says, you're bipolar too. I'm like, all right, let's, let's just give this a whirl then. So that's when I finally came to terms with the fact that I'm bipolar. Um, I didn't want to be labeled bipolar. And uh, I started taking Lamictal. I had a really bad reaction to Lamictal. But it was like, the, while it was working, it was like the best drug that ever could have possibly worked for me. And then I saw a different doctor who I see today. And she's, I, I'm like, OK, I'm going to test this out. I'm just going to go in and present my symptoms and see what she says. I'm not going to let her know that any other doctors you know, label me bipolar too. Went in there, she's like, you're bipolar too. I'm like, OK, all right, fine, I give up. I surrender. I surrender to this. And um, that was about three years ago. And coming to terms with that was very, very difficult for me because my father told me that people are crazy who are bipolar. And the way that my mania, my hypomania, manifests itself in my adult life is, is like this. I woke up one morning and I decided I wanted to go buy a motorcycle. I thought it would be a really great idea to go buy, to buy a motorcycle. I go down to the motorcycle place. I have $3,000. I'm like, I want to buy this motorcycle. He's like, well, let's try to get you financed. I'm like, great. So he financed me. He's like, oh, you're approved. I'm like, great. Let's get this $20,000 motorcycle. I'm like, sounds like a great idea. So I get on the bike. I can't, I can't even sit on it. I can't put my feet on the ground. And I'm like, great, I'll take it. I'll take it. Sounds like, I mean, this is great, right? Great idea. This, in my head, everything's like a great idea. And um, as soon as I walk off the lot, this wave of like, this cloud of despair comes over me immediately, realizing what I had done. I go home, and I lay in bed for like, t for like two days. I didn't go pick up the bike um, in this depressive episode. And um, I call my dad, who's an attorney. I'm like, look, I'm like, I know you don't think I'm crazy, but this is, I did something crazy, and um, I need your help. And he helped me get out of that, that contract. But that's kind of how the difference between what the story I just shared with my friend Brooke, you know, thinking that she's Jesus Christ, and then the story of me having impulse issues as far as like just going and buying a motorcycle 
$20,000 motorcycle I can't afford and I couldn't even get on. So that's how my hypomania manifested for myself.